you should never invest in a business you don't understand. So in this video, I'm going to look into Tesla's products, business model, competitive advantage, and management team to see if the company is a renewable energy company founded in 2003 and headquartered in California. Tesla sells its products direct to consumers and commercial customers, predominantly via its website and manufactures most of their products in-house. To understand Tesla's business model, we can look into Tesla's not-so-secret master plan, which consisted of building a sports car in the original Roadster. The profits used from that car were then used to build a more high-end affordable car in the Model X and the Model S in the luxury car market. The profits from that was then used to build a more affordable car in the Model 3 and Y for the mid-size market. Whilst doing this, they also provided zero emission electric power generation options with solar panels through the acquisition of Solar City in 2016. Battery storage for small-scale residential use with the power wall could store that solar energy along with a large-scale megapat for electrical grid connections on a larger scale. Tesla has since achieved these milestones and has set out their next phase in the secret plan where they aim to create solar roofs with seamlessly integrated battery storage, expanding the electric vehicle product line to address all major segments consisting of the Cybertruck for utility and the work truck market, the new Tesla Roadster for the supercar market, the semi truck for the commercial market, and also a future compact car for mass scale affordability. The final part of Tesla's master plan is to provide self-driving capability that is 10 times safer than human-operated vehicles via massive fleet AI learning. This will enable your car to make money for you when you aren't using it as part of the Tesla's future robo-taxi network. There is also Tesla's insurance segment which provides a massive opportunity to take market share of the global insurance business worth an estimated $1 trillion by 2027. Tesla customers can be either individuals with cars or businesses with trucks and semis who want tailored insurance to lower ongoing costs whilst encouraging safer driving habits. Tesla's inbuilt safety features and constant data analysis of driving habits allow them to adjust insurance fees to their risk tolerance and is often lower than most competitors. Now there is always a risk of other electric vehicle manufacturers coming to market with alternative products. However, given Tesla's vertical integration and continued research and development, I believe they will stay ahead of all competitors in the vehicle segment. They also have so many other business segments that put them in another league of their own with regard to energy. The world's largest businesses by revenue are made up of multiple oil and gas companies, which boils down to energy requirements. And with the world continuing to transition to cheap, clean energy, Tesla again has a massive total addressable market and this is the area I'm really looking forward to with Tesla's growth. If they can continue to build the world's best practice battery technology at scale and low prices, they can have a large portion of the energy storage market to themselves. If you're enjoying this style of video, please give it a like and subscribe to let me know. Now what makes Tesla so unique and give them a competitive advantage? Well first of all, they are the leader in battery technology and is going to be their key advantage moving forward. They make roughly half of all lithium-ion batteries produced in the world and continue to fund money into further research and development to stay ahead of other competitors. They control the production, they have the lowest battery cost, highest energy density, the lowest level of expensive cobalt and soon to be no cobalt whatsoever. Tesla is the leader in EV driving efficiency with world-class thermal battery pack management and in-house drivetrains, allowing the Model 3 to reach best-in-class efficiency above 4 miles per kilowatt hour. Vertical integration is another advantage as they manufacture more of their car's components than other automakers. Tesla designs and manufactures their own electric motors, and they have vastly improved upon the AC propulsion motor they started with a decade ago. By controlling the manufacturing of their own parts, especially batteries, from start to finish, Tesla can create a significant cost advantage. They are the leader in self-driving technology, with every Tesla being equipped with sensors and cameras collecting data to train its neural network. The over-the-air updates allow all cars to get the latest software every time there is a new release, with more driving situations being addressed, allowing sensors to interpret more complex problems. There's no other company that can compete with this kind of setup. 
Next, there is a supercharger network. This one's pretty simple and it's likely their largest moat. There's other car companies that are recognising this now and looking at ways of investing in their own charging networks. However, it won't be easy to catch up to Tesla. One of the other benefits of over-the-air updates is the continuous improvements Tesla makes to the vehicle's range and power increases, and who doesn't like that? Not having a dealer network is a massive overhead cost saving, plus makes the purchasing process nicer without having to talk to a car dealer. Tesla is doing a lot of selling online already, lowering their cost to serve the customers. Finally, the ever-lowering price points available for Tesla vehicles. With all the criticism about Tesla slashing its prices, people think it's a sign of disappearing demand. I think this is a good thing, a sign of strength and long-term competitive advantage. That means Tesla is getting more efficient every day with their capital and operating expenses. Every drop in a price makes it much harder for would-be competitors to enter and compete in this market. Now looking into Tesla's financials, what I like to see is revenue growth, earnings per share growth, shareholder equity growth and positive free cash flow increasing. Now, looking back at Tesla's financial history is a, a pretty mixed bag if we're being honest. However, there are a few good positive signs that I like to see with revenue growth increasing at you know fairly decent profit margins. However, the earnings per share has been fairly negative throughout their history and their return on assets and return on equity has been pretty poor, to be honest. However, what I like looking at is the continued trend over each successive year improving. Now, Tesla has certainly reached an inflection point in 2020. With increasing vehicle deliveries, operating cash flow and free cash flow now in the positive, and net income has slowly turned as well to the positive. The part that really impresses me now is the growing free cash flow that they can use to keep growing the business or pay down shorter term debt. They had previously taken on a fair amount of debt to grow the business, however, they now have enough cash to cover this, which certainly puts my mind at ease. Now onto the man, the myth, the legend himself, Elon Musk, and his merry band of musketeers. One question I like to ask myself is, how is a CEO paid and is it aligned with shareholders? Personally, I would prefer to be invested in a company where the CEO's pay is aligned with increasing shareholder value, as this incentivizes them to perform well and grow the business. Elon Musk's pay is directly aligned with increasing shareholder value, as he has a 100% pay for performance with no salary, bonus or time-based equity. To get paid, Elon has 12 stock option tranches linked to the market cap of Tesla, with the maximum market cap tranche unlocked at $650 billion US dollars. This is in conjunction with meeting increasing revenue targets with a maximum of $175 billion US dollars and earnings before interest, tax, depreciation and amortization, maximum of $14 billion US dollars. Yes, this is quite a lot of money to pay out to a CEO, However, it does bring tremendous shareholder wealth with minimal shareholder dilution. Not to mention, there is also a five-year holding period on the shares issued to Elon. So there are still future years of incentive once all tranches are unlocked. Another metric I like to look at is the ROIC, or the Return on Invested Capital. This shows how well the management team reinvests their profits back into the business and grow their earnings. If the management team can get a better return than paying out a dividend, then I would much rather the business keep reinvesting the company profits. Now, Tesla's ROIC has been improving since the Model 3 production issues in 2018 have been resolved, and Giga Shanghai is now producing cars more efficiently based off the learnings from the Fremont factory. My opinion is that these learnings will continue into Tesla's future factories, becoming more efficient with their use of capital, particularly around lowering the cost per kilowatt hour for batteries and lowering the investment per gigawatt hour for each new gigafactory. And finally, debt management. This can really kill a business, so I like to see a management team control their debt levels. So Tesla has been utilizing a lot of debt to fund their initial growth, but now there's a lot of cash on hand and growing free cash flows that can easily pay this debt down. So they can pay it down if they wish to. However, I see the bulk of this cash being used to fund future gigafactories, which I'm okay with, as this will grow their earnings. So in summing all of this up, what do I think? Well, Tesla has certainly reached an inflection point becoming consistently profitable and seemingly self-sustainable, which de-risks the business whilst putting some of the Tesla bears in their place along the way. I only see this growth continuing for Tesla in both the automotive and energy sectors as the prices for their products continually decreases riding declining cost curves in batteries. This opens up their product line to a larger audience providing a better value for money. 
it would be much cheaper to own and maintain an electric vehicle over a gasoline car. Plus, there is the convenience of charging at home and never visiting a petrol station ever again. This is why Tesla is part of my stock portfolio and will remain there for the long term and I'll definitely be adding to my position over time. Let me know in the comments what you think of Tesla and whether they're worthy of investing in. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and I'll see you in the next one.